You can figure this out. You can figure this out. I bet they're figuring it out in China and India. Okay. Let's not get left behind. Let's not get left behind. I am 13 years old. I am 13 years old. I am 14 years old, and I already know this. I feel it. I want to make it happen. I want to make it happen. I want to make it happen. Don't you? Don't you think it's time we have our say? <laughs> All right. The music is quite intense, so. <laughs> Um, it's a, it was another collaborative, um, I think it was a middle school group funded through a university program. So, so the children were involved in that? Uh, I, I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. I'd love to tell you yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, one thing I can tell you is that my students are definitely that savvy. I'm working with an older age group. Um, my kids are... 15 to 17. So, so what did I do? Um, I have all of these problems and issues swirling around in my brain as a teacher. So what I just presented to you, I've got this sort of student that is incredibly savvy. I have a student that makes a website for anything I give him, no matter what. Like if it's a poem, he submits it on a website. If it's a thesis paper, he submits it on a website. Um, but yet, if I am teaching students about social media awareness and I send them all an article, I, I forget that anything with the word MySpace is going to be blocked by the school system. <laughs> so I can't tell them how to protect themselves. <laughs> um, Even if it's a New York Times article and the word MySpace in it? Uh, it at, at the beginning of the year, yes. Oh. Um, I slowly, I'm actually a hero in my school because YouTube is now unblocked. So <laughs> uh, they don't know why, they just like that I did it. <laughs> um, but I have reasons. All right, so what did I do to, uh, personally? Um, I recognize a, a history of complex, meaningful practice. And what the hell does that mean? Um, I recognize, I watched my students, and they were constantly writing, like constantly. Meanwhile, the teachers are sitting in meetings after school about why, what, how can we get our kids to write. Nothing can inspire these kids to write. And I'm like, insane. <laughs> um, they're writing constantly. We're like, we're saying, put the phone away. And I, I, I wanted to write this paper because of a kid who, who took my media literacy class, they said, fine, I'm going to put away me using language to communicate with my friends. Written language, mind you. <laughs> so I can learn about colonial American poetry. <laughs> like, it, was, it was like, they broke me. <laughs> right. Um, so, yes, I basically, the first thing I did was recognize that these kids are writing more than I ever did in high school in terms of meaningful practice. I didn't have a lot of pen pals. I didn't do a lot of writing unless it was for school. That's completely different to modern students. They are writing much, 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 much more than I ever did. Um, I don't know how generational it is, but um, again, I have more than one student that is sending 300 text messages. Now, immediately, if I was speaking to a room full of teachers, the hands would go up, yeah, but that's not real writing. Um, so the one thing I can say is that it is. Um, it is meaningful practice. They are using the written language to communicate in ways that are important to them. So if we start there and accepting that, as an idea, and build anything off of that. And I literally said that to the kids and like explained what I meant. They were like, oh, you get us. <laughs> um, and then they took some pride too. They're like, oh my goodness, I really do write. And then they started making fun of each other. I really hate when people use misspellings on MySpace or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, what are you just like it? Um, so there you go. I then challenged them with what I felt was a sincere weakness. I have a sign in my classroom that says, don't suck at F to F. These kids will break up with each other through text because they're too scared to be face to face with someone. Um, they will fight each other. We haven't had a physical fight. That's another new thing in the past two years. Fist fights, I remember fist fights in the lunchroom, like out behind the dumpster, and this was like four years ago. 
Um, we haven't had a physical fight in the school, and everybody's like, whoa, we're doing something right. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, they're all not communicating with each other. <laughs> and in many ways, um, it's, a, it's a bad thing. <laughs> uh, I would encourage them to like, try and figure out their problems. Um, I watched a Japanese educational documentary, and it was about Jack Japanese elementary school, where there are eight students in the same classroom with one teacher. And if kids start fighting, the one thing the teacher is not supposed to do is break it up. Because when you're really little, you're, you need to let those kids figure out how to solve their problems. And so it was this fascinating documentary about like elementary violence, and it, was, it really is. Um, because they had students that would step up and separate the kids, and then there were mediators, and it was all natural human nature. The kids were like five years old, <laughs> and they're just so more advanced than me or my 16-year-old. My because every single time an American goes up against an American, it's like, stop! We're going to put you in separate rooms. You have detention. You can't. So I'm like, oh, now, so we don't have fights in our school? Maybe it's a product of they're sucking it up to F. They're not even. So what if American kids, they have to figure out how to solve problems when they're 15, and whereas the other kids figured out when they're five? So uh, what I did was I integrated simple common applications. So again, I'm telling you that I am not pre presenting you with Blackboard. I'm not presenting you with um, Moodle or what. These are terms for complex educational programs that schools pay money uh, to confuse them and to, that it's supposed to organize them. I am using things like Twitter, Ning, Google Docs, um, WordPress, uh, YouTube, uh, Mobulus, live casting. Uh, these things that you know any good geek is starting to hear about, and I'm just saying these are the new things, guys. Let's use them in the classroom. So I'm not going to show you. 